Dear sisters and brothers, salamu alaikum. I pray that you are all well, inshallah. Um, it is an honor to be able to speak to you. I truly value your time and the effort you've put into coming here. And I hope, inshallah, the last few nights, the discussions we've had has been beneficial. Tonight is the final night of the discussions. And as uh, Brother Ali was saying, inshallah, tomorrow we'll have a Q&A after uh, the prayer, after Salat al-Maghrib. We'll have, inshallah, a Q&A, which if you're interested, would be nice to benefit from your points. And if you're ready to start the final night, please recite the salawat. Tonight, I said that, inshallah, we'll be talking about Imam Mahdi, ajalallah ta'ala farajah sharif Thank you so much. And one of the things I said last night is that if we don't start with a good foundation in our understanding of the Prophet and the early Imams, by the time you come to Imam Zaman, you inherit a mess. You have an Imam Zaman that becomes so difficult to prove even to your own children, many of you, even maybe to yourself. A few years ago, I remember talking about Imam Zaman, and it was like, yes, so many people were like, it doesn't make sense to us, this part of it, that part of it. Why would he do that? Why would it be like that? I think a lot of the shortcomings we have in our understanding of Imam Zaman stems from our wrong understanding of the Quran that goes into the Prophet and then continues with our wrong understanding of Imam Ali and so on and so forth. One of the things, inshallah, tonight I want to focus on a little bit, although the last few nights we've mentioned so many things, but one of them is this, at some point we need to make up our mind whether Imam Hussein, whether Prophet, whether Imam Ali were, had found a way of living with God that is above pain or not. At some point we need to make our minds up about this, which one do we believe? Do we think Imam Hussein during the days of Ashura lived a painful days? Do we think that last days of Lady Khadija with Prophet was painful? Do we think, for example, Imam Hassan, Imam Ali, these people lived very painful, sad lives? Or was it that on the surface, life was very difficult for them, but they had found a way of having a relationship with God that no matter what happened on the surface, they were fine. I have a feeling, unfortunately, up to now, as she is, we've remained in pain part. And it makes sense because there was so much pain and tragedy on the surface of their life. The prophet himself says, no other prophet suffered as much as I did. Imam Ali, we know how much he suffered. Lady Fatima, we know on the surface how much difficulty was there. Imam Ali, all the way to Imam Hussein. If we cannot digest this, we will always remain in that pain and even the solution we offer to the world, it will never be the perfect solution. Because anyone who brings their pain into the world, the world becomes a place where I need to empty my pain. That's why for a Shia who has a difficult Ashura, Imam Hussein has to be a revenger because what do I do with that pain? That's how their Imam Zaman gets tainted. If you can't digest the pain on Ashura, on Muharram, 
they have no other way than to keep that pain, keep that pain, keep that pain, put it to Imam Zaman to solve. Which, by the way, is a slogan started by people who, against the advice of the Imam, started the movement. If it's okay, I want to take you to Ziyarat Ashura to show how much the pain was difficult on Ashura that after, not for the Ahle Bayt, Ahle Bayt digested it very easily. For people who came afterwards, we all got stuck in the pain and forgot that Ahle Bayt told us, come here because we want to show you a way out of pain. They said, let us bring all the pain in the world in one day and show you that even this pain has a way out. So that from that point onwards, no matter what pain you come across, you know you can handle it. Let me read a few lines from Ziyarat Ashura for you. Please recite the salawat. We close our eyes so the person can go without feeling embarrassed. Let's all look down. It's okay, oh, it's okay, you go and move it, no problem. Go and move it, inshallah, bless you. May the BMW work for you. <laughs> the Vauxhall too, inshallah. Uh, let's read a few lines from Ziyarat Ashura. Ya Aba Abdullah, laqad azumat al-raziyya. وجلت وعظمت المصيبة بك علينا وعلى جميع أهل الإسلام وجلت وعظمت مصيبتك في السماوات على جميع أهل السماوات says, This is a مصيبة by the way means something that happens It's something that happens that it's very difficult It's not difficult just for the people on the earth It's difficult even in the eyes of Ahl Samawat, Azumat Musibatu Kaf Samawat. It's a very huge Musiba. Again, in Ziyarat Ashura, whatever phrase it can use to show this Musiba was huge, it's used. Later on, also, it says what? Musibatan Ma Azamaha. How great is this Musiba? When you come to Ziyarat Ashura, Ziyarat Ashura is not trying to shy away from the fact that what happened on the day of Ashura, on the surface, it's huge. Parents losing their children. Brothers losing each other, mothers seeing the dead bodies of their children. Ashura, it says it's a very difficult day. And what type of people? The most beautiful souls you can imagine. The souls who had dedicated their whole life to helping everyone. So Ziyana at Ashura says it's huge. This part, we got it. 14 centuries, we're in this part. But Ziyarat Ashura, if this is all it wanted to give us, how is this a solution for humanity? We're already going through so much problem, you add another one on our chest? If you think about it, Shias have been carrying so much pain of one of the biggest tragedies in history on their chest. What's the point of it? No wonder, no wonder why so many of our people are always ready to go, ready to... Hope the pain has been too much. Okay, how is that going to help me? The solution was in Ziyarat Ashura, but by the time we get to that part, it's like our attention has almost finished. Now let me read a line from Ziyarat Ashura for you and ask you a question. Allahumma lakal hamd. Hamd means what? Hamd is when you praise something. Hamd shakirin laka ala musabih. After it tells you how difficult Ashura is, even the Ahl Samawat are finding it difficult and all of that, 
it creates the most difficult tragedy you can imagine. And then it says the people who went through it were grateful for it. Says it was a very difficult day. It was huge. Did nothing worse than this can happen. But the ones who went through it went through it in such a way they could look at the world in such a way that by the end of it they weren't like, okay, God, we will be patient. They said, thank you. This Yarat Ashura itself is saying the people who went through all of that, afterwards they were like, thank you, God, for giving this to us. Lady Zainab said, At some point, and I'm hoping that point is tonight, you need to make up your mind. Do you believe? Do you believe Lady Zainab when she said, I saw beauty? Or do you think, no, they were really in pain? The beauty was a lie. The beauty was just a beautiful poem she came up with. She didn't mean it. Were they grateful or were they not grateful? This will change almost everything in your life. If even Hussein cannot be happy, what hope do you have? What do you what hope do you have? What hope anyone in the world have? If Hussein is only someone who is strong and wants to stand against, for example, hope, that makes life a terrible thing. Now, even today, Masalan, I was watching a very great personality, very well respected, but the way he was talking about Imam Hussein, I was like, you don't know what you're doing. He's doing Rose, for example, what happened to Imam Hussein is so difficult. Prophet is telling Imam Hussein something very difficult has to happen to you, and you have to be patient and sacrifice for God. Oh, you're trying to make Imam Hussein a hero by making God a psychopath. If Hussein is one of the most beautiful creation of God, what kind of God it makes him if he gives him a difficulty that he can't have a way out of? Just be patient, just have reza, and it's difficult. Hope this makes God a horrible God. You try to make Hussein a hero who made sacrifice and went, go, went through it patiently, but what kind of God would do that to his own creation? You can't do rose mourning massage for Imam Hussein in a way that makes God terrible being. When you ask Hussein himself, Hussein says, God created an opportunity for me to experience certain things. I'm grateful for my life. Hussein says, I am witnessing life in a way that I'm grateful for my life. It gave me an opportunity to save Hur. It gave me an opportunity to create an awakening in some people. After Ashura, you know, many people decided to change their life. He said, if I manage to save some people's life, wake some people up, I'm happy for that. God showed me, God gave me an opportunity to do that. God gave me an opportunity to, to show how much love is in my heart, how much patience is in my heart, how much loyalty is in the heart of my Abbas, how much beauty is in the heart of my Qasim. How else could I show you that my Qasim is very beautiful? How else could I show you my Abbas is beautiful? Because unfortunately, you guys get impressed so quickly. You see someone listening to Quran or memorizing Quran, you think this must be an angel. He says, those people who memorized the Quran killed my Abbas. If it was not for this day, how else could I show you Quran, Salat, all of this, if your heart is not in the right place, will not save you or your children? How could I have shown you that at the end of the day, it's about the humanity in your heart, not the actions you do? So Hussein says, God, thank you. This is even simple levels of what he witnessed on that day. But hala, when we want to accept this, we're going to come across 14 centuries of inherited obstacles in our way. 
misunderstandings of the Quran, misunderstanding of the Ahadith, so much that people who themselves were not where Hussein is were trying to introduce Hussein to you. And I don't want to judge anyone off. Even if someone in their heart, they're not above suffering, even when they go to Hussein, they can't believe he was. When they go to Prophet, they can't believe Muhammad was above suffering. No one can understand or explain something internally they haven't explained, they haven't experienced, sorry. They bring these people down, even in the history of the Prophet, the majority of them, they say, Prophet always smiled. But because they cannot understand how can a person always smile, they say, oh, probably he was faking it at times out of politeness. Yeah, try faking a smile in this world. You think anyone can fake a smile their whole life? Now, I want to read a few verses from the Quran to show you either these verses are true or not. If it's not true, let me know so we don't have to talk about the Quran again. We put this book aside and we cry together. But if this is true, we need to find a way. And don't expect me to do all the work. You should also be helping me. Now, please recite the salawat. Verse number one. Ala inna awliya Allah la khawfun alayhim wa la hum yahzanun. The awliya of God, the ones who feel the friendship of God, the wilaya of God, there is no fear against them. There is no fear over them. And they do not have huzun, grief. I have a question now. Today I've seen many posts. They say Ashura is a day of pain and grief. On the surface, Samke, we said, Musibatan ma'a'adhamaha. But now, I want to know the heart of Hussein. Begin, you make up your mind. In the heart of Hussein, is there hosn or not? Quran says, Oliya Allah don't have hosn. Oliya Allah don't have grief. On the surface, yes, there's so much. But they eat it, like Qasim says, Al mawtu ahla min al asad. Qasim says this death that for many of you is scary, I eat it like honey. This is Qasim. Well, I'm like, if this is Qasim, what is Hussein like? Hussein was the one God chose to show us no matter how much pain you go through or humanity goes through, you can transcend that. Hussein was God's way of telling Ensan, you are not stuck in any situation. No matter what happens to you, if we're together, you can be happy. So if I think even Hussein is stuck in pain, I have destroyed God's greatest gift. I am worse than Shemr. Shemr killed him. How much longer could have the physical body of Imam Hussein lived? 20 more years, 30 more years. But if I kill the message of Hussein, which is that in son you can transcend pain, I have deprived humanity of the only way out of pain. And on today, I ask you, my beautiful friends, give me a solution that you can give to a person no matter what they're going through, whether it's cancer, whether their eyes are going blind, whether they have a very difficult family situation, whether they've been attacked, whether no matter what has happened to them. Do you have a solution you can give to any person, no matter what they're going through? Maybe they lost their mother. And tell them you can transcend that pain and you're bigger than that. There isn't anything. This is my job. No one has it. The people who are trying to make others feel better themselves are going through so much pain. There was one way out, and that was with Hussein. Hello, we brought Hussein back to pain too. Let me read another verse for you. Inna ladina qalu Allah. Those who say our Rab is God. Rab doesn't mean Lord, by the way, Rab means the one who takes care of us. Rab means so many things. Those who know God is the one who takes care of them, and they keep reminding each other of that, and they 
don't let go of this idea that they have God, they hold on to this belief that we have a God. Quran says, if you get this belief that God is your caretaker, God is there for you, and no matter what life shows you, you hold on to that belief, angels will come and keep telling you, you'll be okay, don't be scared, don't have pain. There's a million voices inside your herd that make you worried. The world is out to get us. This is, and, and at the surface, honestly, the surface of the world is really messy, especially right now. And it's going to get a little bit even worse. To be honest with you, it's going to get much worse. This surface of the world, if you think this is bad, it's going to get much worse. She is, we're meant to be the one who tell the world, oh, don't get scared. The surface may get messy, but we're here for you. We'll show a way out. But believe me, we don't still know the way out yet, majority of us. So we're suffering with the rest of the world. Quran says, Baba, I've chosen a group of people not because they're chosen better than others, to show them a way out so they go and hold the hand of a scared humanity that we will be okay. Remind them one by one that, Baba, we have a God. All these voices inside your head that what's going to happen to me, to my children, to the world, God says, if you remember I'm taking care of you, angels will come instead of those voices will tell inside your head that, You'll be okay. Don't be scared. You have a God. This was meant to be the role of Hussein to show us this is possible. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, istajibu lillahi wa lirrasul, idha da'akum lima yuhyikum. Come towards the God and Prophet when they call you to something that brings you into life. Yuhiko. Quran says this thing you call life is not life. This is a nightmare you don't come out of. Okay, you think God would create a world in which its best creation in song would have to be scared? would have to be in pain, would have to feel lonely, would have to have a million things in its mind. God says this was, an, this was just a dream you were meant to see and wake up from it. I sent you so many prophets to say this thing is not life. This thing when mom gets dementia, when children are in pain, this thing when your body gets weaker and you have a million pressure on you, this thing wasn't life. This was just a dream. You were meant to witness and come and I sent prophets to wake you up. But what did we do? We're like, no, the prophet is asleep too. There's no way out. Hussein is asleep too. There's no way out. But Hussein said, Hussein, when he was leaving towards Kufa, he said, Ka'anna dunya lam takun. Hussein said, it's like all of this never existed. In another series a while ago, in, I think it was the month of Ramadan, I gave an example which may be worth revisiting again today. Imagine a child, please, by the way, pay attention to this. I don't know who in your life showed you love. For some people, it's their grandmother. Imagine someone who showed you love. And if there wasn't any person in your life like that, I hope God shows so much love to you directly in your heart. All the love is from God anyway. Imagine you're lying down on the lap of your grandmother and you're a five-year-old, a six-year-old. Grandma is the person who loves you so much. With her, everything is fine. She's even made a nice food that as soon as you wake up, she wants to give you the food. Your head is on the lap of grandma and she's caressing your hair, but you start seeing a dream. And in that dream, someone is chasing you. And you get scared. And you feel that you're on your own. And you're like, why is grandma left me alone? Why is she not helping? Now, what's the worst thing that can happen to you in that moment if you think that's what life is? 
You're fully safe. Grandma's there. Everything's okay. You've just mistakenly thought that dream is your life. All you need to do is to wake up to see everything is okay. That's what the prophets were meant to do. They came to the dream with us. They suffered in the dream with us to show us suffering is not real. To show us all of this is a dream. Quran says, I want to call you back to real life. Go back to grandma. And don't think this is just mysterious thing no one's experienced. Even now, even now in the world it's there. I watched videos of it myself during the last year. A beautiful soul who was burying his fiance. And he said, he said, my fiance just the last moment before she was killed, she told me, don't worry for me. I've seen myself as a soul. And he said she had so much light in her face those last moments of her life as he's burying his own fiance that almost he had also woken up to some extent from the dream. Now imagine if we bring Hussein back to the dream and say that was not possible. Please recite the salawat. There are more verses of the Quran, but because I want to finish with Imam Mahdi, we'll talk about them maybe, inshallah, another time if I'm alive. There are so many verses in the Quran that talk about the possibility of this. Many verses. But I want to mention a few ahadith as well. Because often you're tricked using ahadith. The world of Ahadith, but Quran is a very beautiful world, very clean. It's all pure verses, but even Quran says, if you come to me, there's certain things inside which are not correct. La yazidu zalimina illa khasara. Quran says, even with me, such an amazing, beautiful book. If you come with an attitude, you will bring things out which will only make you worse. You will read into it. You will change its meanings. Ahadif, the possibility of this, is even a million times more. It's also, you don't know what's there. A person comes, reads one hadith for you, tricks you for the rest of your life. And you're like, Imam Sadiq said that. Allah, you don't know Imam Sadiq said also a million other things as well. This person just read this one for you. When you, for example, go and read the ahadif about crying, there's a million different hadiths. Anyone can, based on what they want, share the ones they like with you. And if you internally don't know what the Prophet is about, what Quran is about, anyone can sell almost anything to you. And you don't know, the like, oh, Prophet said that, it must be true. You don't know there's another hadith that says the opposite. This is so important. Huh? This is how for 14 centuries a distance was be kept between you and your Prophet, you and Imam Hussein. Beautiful souls with good intentions sometimes and sometimes and with bad intentions came between you and your Hussein and they introduced a different Hussein to you. But they had read more books, they kept shutting you down. You couldn't discuss with them. Otherwise, so much of what I say now, I know many of you are like, that's not new, I thought about it. Well, Habibi, if you thought about it, why didn't you share? Because I was scared every time I brought it up, the guy who had read more books shut it down. There's a beautiful hadith by the Prophet in which he says, نَحْنُ مَعَاشِرَ الْأَنْبِيَا أَشَدُ النَّاسِ بَلَاءً وَالْمُؤْمِنُ الْأَمْثَلْ فَالْأَمْثَلْ The Prophet says, we as prophets go through the most amount of difficulty and anyone who's closer to us in faith and goes through a lot. Imagine someone stops the hadith here. Sheikh, see? The Prophet says, Baba, she, she were above pain. Prophets are going through the most amount of difficulty and the believer is after them. Life is meant to be difficult. Inshallah, next world, God will forgive us or give us reward. Just let me finish the hadith. And the Prophet says, وَمَنْ ذَاقَ طَعْمَ الْبَلَاءِ تَحْدَ سَتْرِ 
تلذذ بهی اکثر من تلذذ هی به نعمه The prophet says if you taste the sweetness of God's protection when the surface of life is messy and all crazy illness pain if you feel that sweetness of God's protection it's way sweeter than when on the surface you're in blessings It's one thing now to sit down here and I'm like, hope I'm okay, digga. there's no fire or I'm not burning. Or Ibrahim in the middle of fire and God tells the fire, Ya naru kuni bardan wa salama. Don't touch my Ibrahim. Who's feeling God's love more? Me or Ibrahim? Me sitting here, I'm not burning. Ibrahim I'm is sitting not burning. But Ibrahim sees that I have a God that when I remember him, even fire is not burning me. The prophet says, if you taste that, you go crazy for God. On the day of Ashura, I mean, Alan to be like, God loves me. <laughs> but imagine on the day of Ashura, Imam Sajjad says, when my dad came to say farewell to me, when I hugged my dad, Blood started coming out of the shield. That how many, how much wound Hussein was carrying. But Hussein said, hey, with all of this blood, oh, I'm feeling nothing. I'm great. Imagine being in that and feeling great. Dige, after that, what can shake you? What can ever make you scared? Oh, on the day of Ashura, can I let you in on a secret? God exposed himself. Ziyarat Ashura, God is exposing himself. God says, all the difficulty in this world and the next, Qiyama Akhira, no matter how much, if we bring it all, insan can eat it like honey. Initially it says, Musibatan ma a'adamaha, this ahl samawat wal arz it's great it's everything and then a teenager comes and says i ate it like honey so after ashura if you know what happened again nothing in the world can scare you qiyamah can't scare you this world can't scare you enemy can't scare you illness can't scare you pain can't scare you because you're like i can eat it all with god if god is next to me there's nothing they get after this that can even a one bit get to me. This is something we desperately need right now. Not just for ourselves, for the world. Because increasingly on the surface of the dream, there's going to be more worries, more fears. You just saw what happened as well. If you really love Imam Hussein, now it's time you become his messenger in the world. What is the one who wants to introduce Hussein to the world? In his own, her life, find so much safety with God that can go take people's hands, be like, I know what you're going through, it's difficult. Let me find, let me show you a way out of pain. You're going to be the messengers of hope in the world. Messengers of insan's ability to transcend pain and suffering. This is what Hussein is. Now this is what Imam Zaman would come to say, I am the continuation of this path. If you get Hussein as the way out of pain, then Mahdi makes sense. Mahdi is the one who says, with me, get finally everyone will get to that level. Everyone will become la khawfun alayhim wa la hum yahzanu. One of the things which may be worth mentioning, and I've mentioned this before, is if you, is it okay if you recite the salawat?
One of the things which I think it's very good for us to bear in mind is that this is not an inaccessible level, by the way. It's just no one has really in the world ever wanted it. Think about it. How many she is right now in the world? There are some, I know, if you're one of them, bless your beautiful soul. Although even if you're not, I'm blessed, you're a beautiful soul. But please be calm. How many she is in the world ever ask themselves, I have a question and I need the answer from Mahdi? Not from this book, not from that book, not from this professor, from that, from this Ayatollah, from this. All of them, I'm blessed them. May God, inshallah, increase their tawfiqat. I have a question, I want Mahdi's opinion. And a Mahdi that makes sense to me. A Mahdi that I can tell my children and I don't have to force it on them. A Mahdi that sits well with my fitra. A Mahdi that himself is not thinking about something that happened 14 centuries ago. If he's coming to take revenge of his own grandfather, he doesn't have time for me. The majority of people, wallah, they don't care about Imam Zaman. Even when they go to Imam Zaman, they're like, Imam Zaman, we know what we should do. We've read the books. We've listened to the lectures. We know what we should do. Just come support. Just like yesterday, someone told me, we've created a package to introduce Imam Hussein. Can you share it to I said, I disagree with the whole package. You're just using me as a speaker. Copy paste it. You do the same with Hussein too. If Hussein was here, like, oh, Hussein, we created a package about you. You would love it. Can you share it too? We're doing the same with Mahdi too. Mahdi, we know everything. We've got the books. 14 centuries, we've worked on it. Believe me, the Mahdi, real one. And the Mahdi many people have, no matter how beautiful they are, I'm not judging anyone. Everyone is trying their best. But no one is Mahdi. No one comes close to them. The majority of people many of us look up to, they may be a little bit higher than you. Between them and Mahdi, there's a whole Mahdi distance. The things we get impressed by and start turning someone into our role model are so childish. Oh, this person has written 10 books, so what? This person has done Salatul Lail 20 years. Shemr has done so much as well. I'm not saying this person is Shemra. But I'm saying Ahl Bayt cannot be compared to anyone. I said, and the other day I was talking to someone, he said, oh, this scholar, mashallah, he has knowledge of the unseen. I'm like, what has he done? He said, in his class, once he realized someone had not done their Salat al-Fajr, and he told him, don't come to the class when you, you missed your Salat. I'm like, wallah, I would change anyone with this scholar. God gives you knowledge, and you use it to embarrass God's creation. You have an Ali that people keep coming to the Prophet, and they tell the Prophet, people are sinning outside the mosque. Prophet says, it's okay, we'll deal with it. They keep telling, nah, nah, people are sinning outside the mosque. Do something about it. Prophet says, okay, Ali, can you go and check what's happening? Imam Ali, when he leaves the mosque, he starts looking at the sky. He goes out looking like this, comes back and tells the Prophet, I didn't see anything. This is my Ali. Allah, God's given you power. You want to expose your student who forgot to do Salatul Fajr? That's all of your knowledge worth? To embarrass someone? Wallah, you're worse than the person who doesn't pray. Allah, no one is like Prophet and Ahl Bayt, at least for now. Allah, inshallah, can more people become like them. It's not impossible, Allah. It's just no one's interested. We've put some people between us and the Ahl Bayt who if you look at them, 10 years they never smile. And I'm not judging them, bless them. We're doing the damage to them by placing them between us and the Ahl Bayt or between us and God. 
آقا when was the last time you got a letter from someone that you respect so much that do you know your pain really hurts me اهل بیت every now and then they would keep writing to their shears there's a letter from Imam Reza he said to someone do you know when you get ill I get ill too Another imams tell them, do you know when you're in pain, I feel in pain? Imam Reza in that letter, it's so touching. He says, when you're in a difficulty, we keep praying with you as you're praying for yourself. Even then when you get tired of praying for yourself and you go silent, we don't stop. We still keep praying for you. This is the person who was meant to show me there's a way out of pain. Not a person whose only interaction with me is to tell me what I should do and what I shouldn't do. Do this, you're in heaven. Do this, you're in hell. And bless them. Everyone is beautiful. But there's a reason why we're not out of pain. And the reason why I'm sharing this with you is that being where the ahl bayt are is not difficult is not impossible it's just that its idea was never shared with us in the month of ramadan after only 30 days of going 29 days 28 days whatever of going through being with god you should I mean, again another thing that we don't appreciate the month of ramadan god says only 28 days 29 days with me by the end of it, you should say, and to Khilani fi kulli khayrin at khalta fi him Muhammadan wa ala Muhammad. Allah. Only one month is enough to have so much ambition to say, I want to be exactly like the Prophet and his family. That's how easy it is. Once when I was talking about this with someone, he mentioned an example for me, which is, I think, good for us to have in mind. Because it shows how much the, the most important obstacle between us and something is the idea that it's possible. Up till 1950s, apparently no one had run one mile in less than four minutes. Imagine. Hundreds of years people had tried, no one had run one mile less than four minutes. This one guy does it, Roger Bannister. The same year a person does it faster than him. The next year another person does it, then another person, then another person. In a matter of no time, everyone's doing it. All it took was one person to show others this thing you're trying for is possible. In our story, that's Hussein. In our story, that's Ashura. Hussein showed, I will bring a musibah, ma'a'azamaha, and I will see it in such a way that by the end of it, I'm like, thank you for it. If anyone is interested in that, one of the ways to get there is start. I had a few things to share. I'm trying to see. Maybe we can talk about that another day. But one of the main things that, inshallah, we need to let go of is that kebr that I was talking about yesterday. Arrogance. Any sense of feeling I'm better than anyone, that's one of the blocks that keeps us in the dream. And Imam Zamanam was meant to represent the hope. And that connection to Imam Zaman is very real, very possible. You don't need to read books to know him. If he's real, you don't need to put anything between you and him. And he is real. Oh, he's so real. Anyone who wants to get to know Imam Zaman, which is a very possible thing, don't worry too much about, I need to read all the books in history. Work on your Tawheed. 
as your tawheed increases, you will find yourself very close. And I hope, inshallah, the last few nights were useful. Inshallah, tomorrow we'll have a Q&A. So if there's anything that you want to bring, please bring tomorrow. I mean questions, points, anything. And may, inshallah, God enable us, open our hearts to know these things are real, to start becoming like that. And honestly, it was really an honor. And let's finish with this line that was always written there. Inna al Hussein, misbahu al Huda, wa safina al Jannah. Assalamu alaikum ya Abu Abdullah. Please recite salawat.